Chairman. Uh, thank you, panel, for coming in today. Uh, this uh, phrase of uncertainty may be overused uh, over the last year, but it's a term that I continue to hear uh, as I am in my district talking to our manufacturers. Uh, and when I ask them to explain, what do they mean when they talk about un uncertainty? Uh, because a lot of them are saying they're making more money, they're more productive, but they're not rehiring. And I think we're seeing that across the country. And oftentimes, um, they will, in different terms, talk about uh, the debt. And we'll also, what does that what does that mean to you? Well, they're concerned then about, um, I think, inflation. They're concerned about uh, interest rates uh, going up in the long term. They're concerned about tax increases that have been discussed here in Washington. Uh, we don't have a long-term tax policy. Uh, we're, we seem to be going year by year. And uh, in, in my area, I'm in uh, the northwest quarter of Wisconsin, uh, there's a lot of concern about what's happening with the EPA. Uh, we have uh, a large forest products industry uh, in my district. And all of those things are coming together, and they're saying create an uncertainty. So they're not taking the risk that they normally may take. I mean, are, are, are you all seeing that in, in your studies or your conversations, that the uncertainty, not necessarily from the business side of things, but actually from the government side of things, is affecting uh, our willingness of our manufacturers to expand and grow? And I'll throw it out to the panel as a whole. I don't want to take a stab. Mr. Zandi? Yeah, I, um, I think there is something to that argument, yes. Uh, I think that uh, American businesses in aggregate are in very good financial shape. You know, we have to make a distinction between the very large companies and smaller companies that aren't doing quite as well. But in their totality, they're very profitable. Profit margins are very wide. Uh, they did an admirable job getting their cost structures down during the recession. It's really no longer, in my mind, a question of can businesses hire more. It's really a question of willingness, and that goes to confidence. And there are, I'm sure, a melange of things that are weighing on confidence. Part of it is we went through the Great Recession. You don't forget that quickly if you're a business person. And I do think uh, policy uncertainty has played a role. Some, some of the policies come to fruition, uh, health care reform. And I'm not, I'm not uh, speaking to the merits of any of the policy itself, but just the fact that we've gone through these very significant debates and discussions. Health care reform, financial regulatory reform. We didn't nail down the tax code until the very end of last year. We debated things, Congress debated things that didn't come to fruition but made business people nervous, cap and trade, uh, immigration policy, card check. Uh, I do think that the policy uncertainty is fading. Uh, there hasn't been uh, major initiative, legislative initiatives uh, in the last six months. But I do think the one thing that, and I speak to a lot of business people in my work in lots of different uh, industries all across the country, uh, the one thing that makes them very nervous at this point is they can't construct a narrative in their mind as to how Congress and the administration are going to come to terms on first the debt ceiling and then ultimately on our fiscal situation. And unless they can figure that out, they're going to they're going to be very they're not going to fire people, but they're going to be very slow to hire people because as you point out, that means potentially higher interest rates. It means potentially higher taxes. It can mean massive changes in government programs, and those things make people very nervous, and that needs to be nailed down. And, and to piggyback on that point, I think what we're seeing is more of our manufacturers uh, ask their current employees to work overtime, or they're uh, asking uh, for temporary workers instead of uh, engaging in some long-term hiring, even though the work may be there. And they are talking about these same issues that I brought up, but also what you reference is um, the health care bill as well. What's it going to cost in health care to hire a new employee? I mean, just specifically, um, are you guys aware of the EPA's Boiler Act uh, proposed regulation? Uh, in, in paper uh, manufacturing, we use uh, industrial boilers. <clears throat> and at a time when we're under immense competition from China, uh, which I think is unfair competition, um, we're struggling to stay alive in, in central and northern Wisconsin uh, with our paper manufacturers. And it's a huge part of our economy. And these proposed regulations, which are, which are going to increase American standards, uh, which are far above already Chinese standards, um, in the end are going to drive American jobs overseas. And I think if we look at our environment, we're all drinking the same water and breathing the same air. And to send our jobs and our manufacturing uh, to China, where they have far less standards than we do, uh, just doesn't make sense. And I, I, again, I think policies are coming from Washington that are making it more difficult for our manufacturers to compete uh, on the global stage. Um, and obviously you guys are aware of the, the Boiler Mac. Boiler Mac could, could uh, severely harm the, pa the paper industry. Um, 
it's good that, that there's a bit of a delay there, but there are several other regulations that are coming down the pipe, pike. Uh, I've already mentioned the ozone regulations. There's, there's um, potential regulation of carbon dioxide from the EPA. Um, the recent uh, decision by the NLRB to, uh, to cite Boeing is, uh, and try to tell them where they can locate a production line, all of these things factor into uh, a business's decision on where they're going to do business. You know, are they going to do business in the United States? Or are they going to emigrate? Or are they going to evaporate? And I, I, I don't think anybody uh, in government wants to see to see businesses evaporate or to emigrate. So our, our job really needs to be to provide that certainty and, and stability, um, deal with the tax code, which is going to expire at the end of next year, deal with the regulatory overreach that we've seen from so many agencies in order to make the business climate more stable for American business. Absolutely. And I would agree with that. And Mr. Chairman, I'd yield back the remainder of my time. Thanks so much. Uh, Congressman Mulvaney. 